Hey everyone, it's the Reverend Jindy Burwell. I'm just recording my thoughts that I'm going to use today in our reflection slot. Um, today we are starting a five week series, if you like, where we're going to concentrate on looking at the first letter to the Corinthians. So in our newsletters, there has been a little bit of background about the first letter to the Corinthians and we need to bear in mind it was written in about 55 years after Christ so 55 so nearly 2,000 years ago 1960 years ago written by Paul and it's his response to some questions and some concerns that were being raised so it's like hearing the second half of a conversation um, and not hearing the initial starting point of it. Now, at the time, Corinth, who he was writing to, the city of Corinth, was a thriving city. It was quite wealthy, but there was a huge disparity between the wealthy and the not wealthy. There was also all sorts of behavior going on, okay? So this is the time where there was prostitution in the temples and kind of anything goes was the, the narrative. So we may go, hmm, that's not necessarily that different from today. As we look at any scriptures, I think there are two kind of errors that we can make. One, we can go, oh, that's not relevant today, and just ignore it. And the other we can go is, I'm going to look at this literally. So I'm going to just read it in, in this English translation with no reference to the past and to the language it was written in or to the context it was written in, and I'm just going to like literally put it into today. And again, that can be an error. We have to hold intention the idea that it was written a long time ago in a different language to different people, but still can be relevant to today when we do some of that work to find the similarities and to apply it and to hear from the Holy Spirit. So that's kind of the thing. Because we're looking at a letter that is 16, I think, chapters long, but we're only looking at little bits over five weeks, I invite you to read the entire letter, the first letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians in the Bible, and, and ponder it, wonder about it for yourself. Today we are leaping in <laughs> to um, chapter 6, verse, starting at verse 12. So we're following the lectionary readings, which is why we're not kind of going through the whole letter but I do invite you to do so and to be in touch if you want to discuss it. So the reading for today. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food. And God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall become one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one flesh with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. 
Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church and to you and to all of us. Thanks be to God. As I've already alluded to, we need to understand the background of our scriptures. So take what I've said so far and, and you know, do some Googling and understand the context in which this was written. What might God be saying to us today? What might be a similar issue, a similar thing that we can think of today? And so let's think for a moment about our bodies, about food and about sex and about all the things that we do with our bodies, which are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Maybe thinking about these things we're not super comfortable with because they're very intimate conversations. Even food is a very intimate conversation. But when we think about what we're putting into our bodies, where the food is coming from, how much or how little we're eating, the atmosphere and environment in which we're consuming it, these things, they matter and they affect us and they need to be pondered. Anything goes is not true because it's not all good for you. When we start to consider like the, Corinth, Corinth, the people living in Corinth did, that anything is permissible. If it's legal, it's okay. When we start thinking that that is where our freedom is, where anything goes, as long as it's consented, woohoo, anything we eat, anything we find and can eat, we can eat because we're allowed nowadays. There's no food laws. That's not necessarily beneficial to us. And psychologists are finding now that, you know, perhaps God's not a prude, but actually wants the best for you. And freedom, unadulterated freedom to do whatever you like, wherever you like, with whomever you like, consuming whatever you like, actually is not good for you. It is not good for you physically. It is not good for your health. And it's not good for your mental health. When we chase happiness and joy and great experiences and fun everywhere we kind of find it, it might seem like freedom. It might seem like wonderful stuff. However, it is a little like a drug where suddenly more and more and more is needed to get the same level of, of fun and buzz from it. And so without trying to sound like a super moralizing, you know, priesty person, we all need to think about what are we eating, what are we consuming, what are we watching on telly, how much of it are we doing, what is our, you know, sexual pleasure um, life like? You know, all the things that we do with our bodies to seek pleasure and to give pleasure, we actually need to consider, are they actually beneficial? And is that beneficial for us or beneficial for others or beneficial for the planet entirely? When we consider our food habits, some of those things may not be beneficial for our health. Some of our habits and our things may not be beneficial for other people. When we use food as a, as a comfort and we give food as a comfort, it might not be beneficial to the other person. And we need to consider our food habits and our climate change and our production of food, what of that is being beneficial to the, to the future people and to the planet as a whole? Beneficial to animals? What is or is not spiritually appropriate, as the scripture says? 
when we consider them and others as well. Again, not super easy things to discuss and you will need to do that work for yourself and to decide what is and isn't the right thing for you because otherwise it does seem like, you know, massive moralizing which doesn't help. And we need to do this work for ourselves because otherwise we roll into that other scripture that says, you know, I can look at the, the speck in everyone else's eye while ignoring the log in my own because it might be easier to think we can see what's wrong with everyone else's lives and we neglect to, to consider our own. The Corinthians even viewed, the Christian Corinthians viewed their freedom as Christians as paramount. Having the Holy Spirit meant they were free of all rules governing their behavior. You know, the Old Testament rules were gone because they now had Christ and they had the Holy Spirit and anything was permissible. In fact, they even, the phrase, all things are lawful for me, had become their slogan. And I wonder about that when we go, that is my right. I have these rights. I'm allowed to do this because I am free. Well, maybe we're not as free as we think we are, particularly when we are tied to our emotions and our feelings and our seeking of pleasurable experiences. Paul is countering that position by teaching Christians that their freedom comes from belonging to Christ. You are not your own. You have been bought at a massive price for Christ and, and you are only free when you lay down your rights to follow in the way of Christ. And it may seem like a limiting of what you're allowed, but when you freely choose that, it is incredible. And it is where freedom and joy and contentment and happiness lies. You can't make that choice for other people though. And we are discovering as people have less seek less, have less choice around, you know, how many tubes of toothpaste do we need to choose between? Having less choice and limiting ourselves may seem like a limit of freedom, but it actually opens up true freedom. And yes, it is a paradox. And you don't really get it until you start to experience it. And also remember in Corinth, sexual carry-on of all sorts of stuff was everywhere, was rife. Okay, so there was power and control, manipulation, and just this absolute anything goes anywhere you like. But it wasn't really free. And people had raised some questions and some complaints to Paul, and Paul was answering them in this letter. So I'm going to leave us here where we are thinking about we are God's temple. How will we therefore treat our bodies? And food and sex might be a starting point. And there's lots of other things we can consider with regards to our, to our bodies as well. Just because something is legal or allowed does not make it beneficial to you, to others, to the planet, to the animals, to beneficial. I invite you to sit and spend some time with the Holy Spirit and ponder those things for yourself and consider what you may be called to change so that you can actually have freedom and joy and contentment. Because the answer does not lie within anything goes, woohoo, I can do whatever I like. It actually lies within what is beneficial what is spiritually appropriate. And I invite you to seek that answer.
for yourself. God bless. I'll see you here again and you are invited and welcome to contact me if you want to discuss. Have a wonderful week. Spend some of it wondering about things. See ya.